Greetings and salutations. We are so glad you joined us today. Just wanted to let you know that we have social media ambassadors live during our streaming services that are there to answer any questions you may have. If they don't know the answer, they know someone who does. So we've got you covered. If this is your first time worshiping with New Bean, drop a thumbs up down below. The old is gone. The new has come. Family, welcome to a new beginning. Hey everybody, my name is Mark Bisiaki and welcome to New Bee Online. Before services begin, we want to take the time to tell you welcome and show you what kind of church we are. New Beginnings Fellowship Church is a ministry that's been built on principles driven by the Word of God. Our belief is laid out in Scripture that, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come, 2 Corinthians 5.17. We are a place where those who are lost, troubled and broken can find strength and healing for their soul. Our environment is one where everyone can feel the love and warmth of God through the pastor, membership, and his Holy Spirit. We are people who honor God and meet the needs of his people with the highest level of excellence, integrity, and respect. We also believe that God is going to say something unique to you today. That may be through worship, fellowship, or the sermon. So we want to take this moment to welcome you to New Beginnings Fellowship Church, the place where the Lord is worshiped and his people are changed. Okay. 
member? Get acclimated to Newbie by joining our new members class. You can choose to attend any second and fourth Saturday at 9.30 a.m. Register online at newbieindy.org. Parents, make sure your children are registered for our Little Beginnings and Newbie Kids virtual groups. They meet every fourth Sunday via Zoom. Register at newbieindy.org. According to his purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody see his song. It's all good. It's all down, yeah. I had some heels to climb, yeah.
people does it take to make a difference? Just one, and that's you. Hi, my name is Shalonda Johnson, the media director for New Beginnings Fellowship Church. The multimedia ministry will have an all hands meeting on Saturday, August 14th from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. This meeting will give you the details on the return to service and what that looks like for the media teams. So if you are an existing member or would like to become a member of multimedia, please join us as we prepare for the return. Well, praise the Lord, my brothers and my sisters. This is the day the Lord has made. And let us rejoice. Let's be glad in it. I, I pray that on this day that somebody already, as you think about this amazing Independence Day, that you think about the fact that something got a hold of you, something grabbed you, something clutched you, something had a hold of you so tightly, but God came, God came through the power of His Spirit and His Son, Jesus Christ, to set you free. I can truly say, because of what the Lord has done, happy Independence Day, and I bless and I honor God for each and every one of you. I pray you are blessed. I do. I pray you are blessed during our time of worship, and let's prepare our hearts and our minds to get ready to hear what the Lord is going to say to us on today. Come on, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We honor you. We give you glory for this day. For God, you are good. You're amazing. And I give you glory whoo, for setting us free. Father, I ask you now in the midst of our praise, in the midst of our worship, that let us hear your voice so clear. Because, Father, at the end of the day, we just want to lead better than the way we came. Let the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts allow them now to be holy and acceptable unto thee. For, Lord, you are our rock, you are our strength, you are our redeemer. And it is in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, come on. This is what I want to share with you real quick. What the Lord has placed on my heart for you and for these next few weeks, for the next few weeks throughout this month, we're going to be looking. So you can go ahead and put a pen there, put a tab there, however you want to do it, because for this entire month, unless the Lord tells me something different, that for the entire month, we're going to go through the 23rd Psalm. What a an amazing book, amazing book, amazing uh, chapter, amazing psalm of David, which is probably one of the most popular psalms in the Bible. So, I mean, it's interesting. I want to share it. We're going to spend some time with it uh, because even the more and more I read it, the more and more I've gone through it, it has blessed me, and I pray that it is going to bless somebody under the sound of my voice. So let's go. We're going to go to the 23rd Psalm, and I really just want to lift up a piece of the 23rd Psalm, and, and then we're going to share what the Lord has placed in my heart in Psalm 23, Psalm 23, and I, and I really want to take a look here at verse 1, Psalm 23, Psalm 23, and I want to look at verse 1. Y'all listen, listen to what it says. Y'all ready? Come on, let's, let's hear what the Lord says to us today. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. Yeah, what, one version says, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want, or I shall not be in want. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. And, yeah, and, and just for a moment, just for a moment, I, I want to talk about it. And this is, and that's the, the subject I want to use today. I want to talk about 
He's all I need. He's all I need. So interesting. This is um, this inspiring, inspiring portion of Scripture. Poem, psalm that has been written by King David. As King David, with all of the amazing things that David has experienced, all of the, the triumphs, that God has allowed him to embark upon and all of the victories that God's allowed him to win. And to hear his story is such a remarkable story of, of, a, of a young man who, who started from the bottom and now he's here. And he's at this place where now he is king. He's uniting kingdoms. He's He's really solidifying himself to be an amazing, amazing king. And, and, and so, it is so interesting and, and, and amazing about this king because he is not just a king that leads, but he's a king who follows. Oof. And I think I, I think I may need to pause for just a moment just to encourage somebody because you, you, you may want to be careful <laughs> If you are following people who are so addicted to leading, but do not know how to follow, that might be dangerous leadership you're under. You want to you wanna follow somebody who knows how to follow. This is where David is, and David is at a place where he's making it very clear that, hey, look, I, I, I know that my position has ma is making it clear that I know who I'm over, but I don't have to go far. I don't have to ask questions. I don't have to do research for me to, to share with you <laughs> who I'm under. And this is where David is making very clear to us. He is. He's making it very clear to each and every one of us, right? Uh, 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 an amazing testimony, if you will. And so, for the next few weeks, for the next few weeks, I want to take this moment and, and spend some time sharing with somebody under the sound of my voice uh, uh, the, the, the beauty of this testimony. Because he shares this testimony. He talks about this amazing <laughs> Uh, a metaphor, and of course, David, who, who, who has spent some time as a shepherd, where he was a shepherd, where he was leading his father's sheep, where he was the one leading his dad's flock, where it was that, at that moment that he got pulled from, from out of the pasture and, 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 and been anointed as the future king. But it was at the moment where he got anointed while he was serving. He was serving, and it was in his service that put him in position to be anointed to get ready to lead. He was following. Yeah, do you hear what I'm saying? And I think I need to pause here because I feel like somebody under the sound of my voice needs to know that, 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 that don't, don't become so hungry for leading that you don't show yourself as a good follower. Because it is at the moment of where you are following, and it's not that you follow, but it's how you follow. If you follow and continue to follow and continue to serve, continue to submit all of this, and it put him in place. And so now David pens these, the words to this psalm that has been known as one of the most popular poems in Scripture, that it's, I've, I've heard it read in weddings and funerals and, um, and, and <laughs> in all types of ministry opportunities in churches and concerts. I've heard songs written after it. I mean, it's just an amazing, uh, amazing, uh, this collection of thought yeah, it's an amazing collection of thought that David is now sharing, right? Where he wants the world to know, ooh, I love this, that I know who I'm over. Now, let me help you understand 
who I'm under. It, it's like I know who, I love this, I, I know how you see me. But let me just g- give you a sneak peek on how I feel, which has put me in the place of where I am. Come on, let's, let's get a chance to talk about this. He, he goes into this moment and he opens this up and I love it. And he just, he says, wait, before I, I start talking about uh, who I'm leading. No, this, is, th- this one here is not about who I'm leading. This is not about, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to talk about me, but I'm not going to talk about the part about me that, that, that's in the paper. I'm not going to talk about the part of me that, 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 the, that society sees. I'm not going to talk about the part of me that, uh, that, that, that people see on, on Sunday mornings. And I'm not going to talk about the one that you see when you come to, when you come to the castle. That's what, this is what David is saying. He says, no, I want you to, to see how I see myself when I'm looking in the mirror. Oh, my God. And while he's talking about himself, and he doesn't talk about himself very long because it's a shift here that takes place where he's saying, I'm going to show you why I see myself the way I see myself because it is the one who is leading me that has caused me to be where I am today. I love this because David is making it very clear. I'm not getting any credit. I'm not taking any credit for what uh, God, what's happening in my life. I'm not taking any credit for where I am in life. I'm not taking any credit for the, the, the accomplishments and the victories that I've attained. I'm going to tell you why I have. I'm where I am. I'm going to tell you how I got to where I am. Go ahead. Right. Put it down. Put it, put, pull your pen out. Go ahead. Write this down. Take notes. I'm going to let you know how I got to where I am. You don't want to know how I got to where I am? It's not because of any power nor by any might, but I got here because I was following a good leader. That's what he's saying. He says, the reason why I'm here, the reason why I am or where I am, the reason why I am who I am is because of the one who's following me. And he says, and I'm going to go ahead and just show you just how I feel about him and how I see him. And he goes on and says, it is the Lord that is my shepherd. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I, 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 need, I think I need to pause here for just a moment because he, he three things I want to lift up for you because I'm going to pause to tell you these three things because I want you to understand that it is the, these three things that, that David shares in this, ver, in this very uh, one singular verse that, 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 that helps us understand all of the 116 words that's being shared in this entire psalm. And this entire psalm, all 116 words, is really just describing the first two words that's in the psalm. And he he goes on to say, I love this, he says, the Lord is my shepherd. First thing I want to lift up to you real quick. Let's go Let's go there. I want to talk here real quick because I, I, I want to lift up the first thing. The first thing that David talks about is he's sharing with the listeners who he is a aware of who God is. I'm aware of who God is. I I am. I'm aware of who God is. I I have not just self-awareness, but I have I am aware of my Savior. I'm aware of my shepherd. And he says, I'm being, I'm, I'm being led. I have a shepherd. And I love this because when you start talking about this whole idea of a shepherd. The shepherd is the one that is uh, responsible for the livelihood and, and, and direction of, of sheep. And, and, and not just sheep, but, but a flock of, of whatever he's leading. And so he, it is this moment where he's saying that the Lord is his shepherd and the Lord is the master. The Lord is the one who is uh, in charge. He is the one that is my leader. He is the one that is my God. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. He, he, I love this. The, the, when you talk about a shepherd, a shepherd who now has sheep, oftentimes it is the shepherd who, who owns the sheep or he, he's making sure that the people who are leading uh, is, is a shepherd over them uh, who's leading the sheep. He owns the sheep. He 
purchased, y'all hear me, the, the sheep. He, 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 he owns it. He, 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 he paid for it. He, he paid for the sheep. He, he, he paid the price for the sheep. And so because he paid the price for the sheep, uh, he has now full ownership of the sheep. That's what a shepherd does. He owns the sheep. And so because of the fact that he owns the sheep, now he has the responsibility of taking care of, of the sheep. And so it is this moment where he's saying that the Lord, yes, he is my shepherd. Why? Because I am aware that I don't belong to myself. Come on, I, I want to help somebody here under the sound of my voice. There may be somebody right now that I understand that, you know, we have gotten caught up in this world of saying, I'm my own man or I'm my own woman. I, I'm grown. I do what I want to do. It's a, it's a moment of empowerment where you are trying to empower yourself to say that you are who you are because of you. But at the end of the day, the longer you live, the longer you deal with life, the more stuff you start going through and you start recognizing that, man, I, I think I've discovered that where I am right now, who I am right now, literally has nothing to do with me but because of the fact that God had his hand on me. And I think I need to pause here real quick and tell God thank you for purchasing me. I, I thank you for, 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 for owning me. I thank you because it is you oh God. This is what David is saying. It is you oh God. It is the Lord who is the one that owns me. He is the one that is in charge of me. He's the one who purchased me and because he's the one that purchased me then I am submitting my life to the one who purchased me. Now watch this. This is what makes it amazing. Because now I have to tell you thank you because you purchased me knowing what you know about me. You, you know me. You know my proclivity. You know my issues. You know my struggles. You know my challenges. You know that I can be off the chain sometimes. You know that sometimes I feel like a nut and sometimes I don't. You know I can be iffy sometimes. You know I can be a little off the chain at times. But in spite of all of that, you still purchased me. This is what I love about my shepherd. My shepherd, I, I love my shepherd because because he purchased me, watch this, in spite of who I am, I, in spite of my proclivity. And now I wonder, do I have anybody that's, that's listening to me under the sound of my voice? Come on, listen, y'all check it out, because it may be somebody here that you recognize that, 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 that your appreciation to God has gone to another level because of how God has treated you, watch this, in spite of how you've treated him. Come on, let's be honest. That's why I can't help but tell him thank you because I've done enough for him to pass me over. I've done enough for he to say that, no, I don't want to deal with you. I, I've, he's, I've done enough in my own life that would cause the Lord to say that I'm not worth the investment. But in spite of all my proclivities, in spite of all my issues and challenges, thank you, God. I am so glad that you look beyond all of my faults. Yes, you did. And you saw every one of my needs. You purchased me. You, in fact, when you purchased me, you set me free from some stuff that I was once tied in. That's why this Independence Day is an amazing opportunity for us to give God praise. Why? Because I can give God praise knowing that I was in something like down into something and somebody came and paid my ransom. Now watch this. I know I'm not the only one. There may be somebody right now. You're listening to me right now and, and you can sit there and say I'm not here free because I paid it myself. I had a debt I could not pay. I didn't know how to pay it. I, I didn't. It was, I was so deep in debt but I thank God that Jesus came, paid the price through his blood and now I am free and I'm recognizing I didn't get free on my own. I'm free because 
somebody purchased me. In fact, you ought to put that in the chat real quick. Somebody ought to type it real quick and say, he purchased me. Yes, he did. Purchased me with his precious blood. Washed me with his precious blood. Cleansed me with his precious blood. And even right now, I'm still living because he covers me in his precious blood. Somebody ought to say, I'm precious in the sight of God because he covers me. Covers me. Purchased me. He's my shepherd. He's my shepherd. Now, I love it because he goes into a moment where David is saying, wait a minute, I, 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 not, not, not only is, is, he, is he, he's not just a shepherd, but, but I can only speak for myself. <laughs> he said, I can only speak for myself. Now you, now, 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 you don't know like I know what he's done for me, but, but I think this may be a wonderful time for you to put your name in there. If you know that the Lord is the one that is your shepherd. Now, now, now watch this. He didn't just say the Lord is my purchaser. <laughs> no, no. He didn't say the Lord is my savior because he did save me. He, he did purchase me. He says the Lord is my shepherd because I've come to understand that because of the type of shepherd he is, because of who he is, you, he says the Lord, the Lord, the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, that, that's Jehovah, that, that is the the Ever existing God, the, the one that is that is uh, not just who, who 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 is, but He was, He is, He is to be. He's all of that wrapped up in one. He is, He is the ever existing God. When I look back over my life and see all the stuff that I've gone through and how I got out of that stuff, I got there because the Lord was there. The stuff that I'm in right now, that God is keeping me strong and keeping me going forward is because God is here with me right now. And this is the beauty of it because he's so amazing. He was there then. He's here right now. And he's not just here for me. He's here for you. And this was so amazing. He's not waiting for the future to take place. He already even exists in the future. We're just walking out what he's already done. He's the ever existing God. And because of that, it is that God God that knows where I've been is that God that knows where I'm going is that God that gives me the direction right now where I can stand and declare the Lord is my he's my shepherd he's my shepherd guys he's the one that that leads me he's the one that's in charge of me. He's the one that in spite of all of my proclivities, and this is what I love about it, because he bought me knowing that I had issues, and it had nothing to do with my proclivity. It had everything to do with his ability. He knew that, that regardless of who James is, regardless of what James has done, regardless of what kind of start he, he has he started in, at the end of the day, when I get a hold of him, I, I'm going to take him place says, that's going to blow his mind. That's where David makes his testimony. He's saying, look, right now, the reason why I am where I am is because I've been led here. The, the Lord, he's my shepherd. He led me here. Now, wait a minute. He didn't find me here, but he led me here. And is there anybody that's just glad that God didn't leave you where he found you? Ooh, I think right there is a wonderful opportunity for you to just say, God, thank you for not leaving me where you found me. You, you found me in a mess. You found me in the mud. Now, no, don't come on, Lord. Let's just be real. God has been good to us, and he's been so good to us, and you ought to just tell him, thank you, God, for how you found me, and you didn't w keep walking. You, where you found me, you didn't ignore me. Where you found me, you didn't keep stepping. You found me in a mess. You found me locked up. You found me in a messed up jam, but because of who you are and your ability, you didn't leave me where you found me. He's my shepherd. That's what he's saying. He's saying he is my shepherd. He, oh, oh wait a minute. He says, I, I, I'm, I'm aware of, of who he is. Wait a minute. But then David says, so, so for me to acknowledge him as shepherd, then I am making it very clear 
that uh, I know you see king, this is what he's saying, but I'm just sheep. Yeah, he didn't say, he, he didn't say, no, the Lord is, he's the king of, of this king. No, no, no. He says, he's my shepherd. So for he to, to share that the Lord is his shepherd, it is David now that's making it clear that, uh, don't, don't get it twisted, I, I'm just sheep. He said, I'm sheep with a crown. That's what he said. I, I'm sheep with a, with a crown. I, 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 I'm sheep with a, with a skeptic. I, I, I'm, I'm sheep that, that just so happen to be in a high place. And, and let's just be honest. I know you, you look good on your job. I know you, you look good with the, with the letters behind your name. I know you, you look good with, with the position that you have and the raises and bonuses that now you have and how people value you. And they should because you work hard. You, you earn your stuff. But let's Let's just get real. The only thing you might as well acknowledge is the fact that you know you still just sheep that God just made look good. <laughs> Isn't that? I think that's enough for somebody to say, God, thank you, because you know how to take sheep and make sheep look good. This is what David says. He says, I'm aware of who I am. I'm aware that I'm just sheep. And, and y'all, you know, there's some there's some 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 things about sheep that 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 uh, that makes this such an intriguing intriguing, an intriguing metaphor because he, he, he knows sheep. David worked around sheep. David, he, he shepherded and led sheep. He protected sheep. He fought for sheep. So he knows these proclivities that, that sheep have. He knows that sheep can be stubborn. He knows that sheep can be very fearful. He knows sheep can be very timid. He knows that sheep can be very, I mean, come on, let's just be honest. They can be very perverse. And and and, and, let, and let's just be honest too, that, that that sheep at times can be real stupid. It, it is. They can, they can do some stuff that you're sitting there thinking, what in the world were you thinking? And now before you begin to start thinking about sheep, then let's just think about the fact that he has put himself in the category of sheep. So he says, I know that I, who I am. I know that you see the warrior. I know you see the king. But at the end of the day, the only reason that I am here right now is because the Lord is my shepherd. I know I have my fears. I know I can be very timid. I know that if the wrong thing comes around, I'm going to find myself running in a corner and crying. I know that I have all the issues I have. And I know that I can be stubborn, that he's telling me to do some things, and I'll even say, okay, and go in a whole nother door. I know what I'm capable of doing, and let's just be honest, I ain't talking about you. Can I talk about me right now? Yes, sometimes I can do some stupid stuff. I, I can say some stupid stuff. I can hang with some stupid people. I can have some stupid conversations, because I know that I have the proclivity like sheep, but thanks be unto God that God makes me look better than who I am. And the reason why he makes me look better is because he purchased me and he doesn't want me to make him look bad. He's my shepherd. He led me. He's my shepherd. He purchased me. This is what David is saying. I'm almost done. I want to, I just want to encourage somebody here today because he makes it very clear. He says, I know I'm aware of, of, of who he is. But, but then again, he says, because I'm aware of who he is, it's being with him that makes me aware of who I am. That's why he calls himself sheep. And I think I need to pause because there may be some people under the sound of my voice that you have allowed the wrong people to give you a perception of, of yourself that's not real. <laughs> yeah, you, you've allowed too many people to pat you on your back to make you think that you are higher than who you really are. <laughs> He says, no, and sometimes you can get around some people that, that, yeah, maybe a little worse off, and you're thinking, yeah, I must be really smart. Well, no, the reality is 
you are using the wrong people as a measuring stick. <laughs> See, if you use people who, who, who you're smarter than, of course you're going to say you're smart. If, you, if you're using people as a measuring stick of, 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 of their attitude and their attitudes are bad, then of course your attitude is going to look good. But when you measure up to an amazing, awesome, all-powerful, all-knowing God, then you're going to recognize that even your righteousness are nothing but filthy rags before your God. You gonna recognize, you know what, when I measure up to my, when I measure up to my, my God, I recognize I ain't all that. I, I ain't who I thought I was. I'm not who I thought, I, I'm not as smart as I thought I was. I'm not, not as anointed as I thought I was. You know, it's interesting, reminds me of uh, uh, about, about a year ago, right? About a year ago, James, uh, oldest boy was out playing basketball. No, he's playing, he was on the baseball diamond. So he's playing baseball and Johnny was just over there on the sideline just acting like he was playing basketball, just, just playing around and running around. And, and one of the parents of, the, uh, of one of James's teammates came up to him and, and said, hey, young fellow. And, and Johnny said, hey, he said, hey, he says, he says, you, I see you jumping and, and running. He says, I think you he said, you, you look like you could be a little, you're a little athlete. And uh, Johnny says, I am. He says, I am. But my son, doesn't, doesn't, he doesn't lack confidence. He says, I am. And, and, and I thought it was very interesting because at the time, Johnny was, um, uh, he, he, he was six. And, and, and there was another little kid that was there playing around on the side. And he says, he says, can you run? He says, he says, very fast. He says, very fast. And so he says, you think you can outrun him? And he looks at uh, this little kid. Johnny looks at him and says, uh, he says, I don't, I, he says, probably. He says, I want to know how fast you are. He says, won't you go race him? Race him. Listen to what Johnny says. Johnny says, well, if you want to know how fast I am, just time me. He says, you don't have to, he says, you don't have to, I don't have to race him for you to find out who fa how fast I am. He says, just time me. And he said, no, I want to see you race him. And he, he named the kid. And, and, and I could tell they were a little boastful. And I, I'm sitting here thinking, man, I, I don't know if you really want Johnny to race this little kid. It's, it's going to get bad. And, and Johnny was trying to warn you. He says, man, if you really want to know how fast I am, don't measure me up to this kid. And he says, because it if you measure me up to him, he said, okay, all right, well, I'll race. So they go down there to the, to the starting point, and he says, all right, let's go. He says, ready, set, and he says, go. And man, within three seconds, Johnny was probably about five steps, steps ahead of this kid to the point that the kid just pretty much slowed down his stride, and Johnny kept on going, and he said, did you time me? And he says, no, I didn't time me. He says, I told you to time me. He says, that's how you were going to figure out how fast I am. You, you figure out how fast I am based on what your clock. Don't measure me based on somebody else because I know I'm fast. I know I'm faster than him. And, and so this is where Johnny is making us understand that if you want to measure up, don't try to measure me up to somebody who I know that is struggling, somebody that's not at the same level. Measure me up to a God that is who is high and sits, sits high and looks low. Measure me to my God. And when I measure myself up to my God, I recognize, wait a minute, James, you ain't all of that. You ain't all of that. I said, Johnny, go back and race again. I'm going to time you. He says, okay, did he time, time him? Well, listen to what Johnny says. He runs, and now he's just as fast as he was with the kid. I timed him, and I said, man, look at you. It was uh, 15 seconds it took you to get there. And he was like, man, then I got more work to do. I said, now that's what I'm talking about. He says, now, if you recognize when you measure me up to something that's greater than me, then I realize that I still got a lot of work to do. And I wonder, am I talking to anybody here? No, don't bring up your cousins. Don't bring up your, your weed head friends. Don't bring up all your crazy co-workers. Measure yourself up to God. When you measure yourself up to who your shepherd is, then you recognize that you ain't all that in a bag of chips. You just sheep. He says, I'm sheep. I'm just sheep. I'm aware of who I am. 
I'm aware that I ain't got it all together, but but I can still tell God, thank you, because he picked me. <laughs> I, I, I'm glad that with all my issues, with all of my, my lowness, he still picked me. And I love this because oftentimes shepherds, oh God, I need to say this real quick, that oftentimes shepherds, when when they choose their, their, their sheep, when they choose who they're going to bring into their, their fold, one of the first things they do is they take this that that this blade and and cut a certain part in their on their ear to, to, to give them a specific mark to let them know that they belong to a certain kind of master. Now yes it's painful and yeah it hurts and yeah you wish that you didn't have to go through it but, but the reality is the, the shepherd said I didn't do it to kill you. I did it to mark you because I don't want you to ever get so far away that I, don't, I can't come back to you because even even when I get to you, I can recognize my mark that's on you. He says, I, I, I've gone through some stuff. You've gone through some pain. You've gone through a few things that shows that, yes, it was painful, but it was purposeful. Yes, it was painful, but yes, it was at the point where God knew what he was doing. And so I'm talking to somebody right now under the sound of my voice. You've been going through some pain. You've gone through some struggles. You've been going through some things that you know it hurts. And God told me to tell you that I didn't let you go through all of this for you to just stay in pain. And though it is painful, I allowed you to go through it because now I'm marking you because you, you have gone through all of that. You've gone through the hurt. You've gone through the pain and still you are here. You've got the mark of knowing that you belong to an amazing shepherd. I wonder if I'm talking to anybody here that said, I know I belong to God and I got the scars to prove it. I've been through the storm. I've been through the rain, but I made it. <laughs> I, I, I feel old school right now because my grandmother them used to sing a song. I've been through the storm and rain, but I made it. I made it. Did you make it? Somebody put it in there. Put it in the chat. I made it. I made it. Let me go ahead and, and close here. He says, I love this about what David is saying and how he opens up this song. He says, Jehovah he is my shepherd. He says, he's my shepherd. That means I'm aware of who he is. He is shepherd. He says, and because I recognize he as shepherd, I'm aware of who I am. I am sheep. But then he goes right on in this second line and and he says, I have everything I need. That's all he said. He says, I'm aware of who you are, God. I'm aware of who I am, God. And when I recognize the partnership and relationship that we have and what you have done in my life, I can now declare I'm satisfied. I, I, I'm satisfied. I, I'm fine with who I am in God. I'm fine with the fact that, God, I don't have to be the in the first spot. I don't have to be number one. I don't have to be the biggest fish. I don't have to be the largest. I don't have to be the smartest. But, God, I'm just glad that you got me in the fold. I'm just glad because, he, because of you, God, I can be able to say I am satisfied. That's what he's saying. When he says, I shall not want, I have everything I need, he's not saying that, I, I'm, that all my supplies are met because I'm talking to somebody that may be saying, well, I, I'm still struggling in some areas and I, I'm still struggling with financially and I'm still struggling in this season. No, that's not what he's saying, guys. He's not saying that he, that I don't have needs. That's not what he's saying. What he's saying when he says I'm not in one, that means whatever it is I'm going through, I've learned to get to a place of contentment that wherever I am in God, I'm good. If God has me there, I'm good. That's what he's saying. And I wonder as we get ready to close this little message on today, is there anybody here that could say that I still stand in confidence, knowing that I may not have what my neighbor has. I may not have what somebody else have. I may not have the degree that you have. I may not have the money that you have. But one thing I do have, I have a shepherd. And, and because I got God, 
Christ. Because I got God on my side, I know that wherever I am, God's got purpose to it. And I know that even if I'm in a dark place, even if I'm in a low place, regardless of where I am, I won't be there long because my shepherd is the one that is leading me. Can we go ahead, take a moment, and just say, God, I give you glory. I give you glory for the contentment. I, it took me a while to get here. Now, I may not have what my neighbor had. I may not be where my friends are. But one thing I can truly say, that I'm not where I used to be. I'm not as messed up as I used to be. I'm not as low as I used to be. And every round keeps going higher and higher. And so I've learned to be content with wherever state I'm in. If I'm up, I'm good. If I'm down, God, I'm good because you promise never to leave me nor forsake me. Do I have a witness here? Is there anybody here today that recognize that with God, you can still walk in peace? Chaos all around but I'm good. Money's still funny. I'm good. Family is in a distray. I'm good. Children off the chain. I'm good. Somebody put it in the chat. I'm good. He says, I'm good. I'm good. And I'm talking to somebody here right now. You don't allow how you feel to be predicated on where you are. You don't allow your context to determine how you feel. That's what David is saying. David went through seasons where people, people tried to kill him. People denied him. People hurt him. And David said, regardless, as long as the Lord is my shepherd, I'm satisfied. <laughs> that's, that's, that's his word. And that's my word to somebody here today. If you know, watch this. Now, you don't know what your future holds. But you do know the one who holds your future. And if you know that it is the great, amazing, awesome, ever present, existing God is the one leading you regardless of where you are. You know that he's got some plans for you. So wherever you are, you can still say, I'm good. I know it's not perfect, but I'm good. Stuff around me may not be good. Oh, God, I want to help somebody. Please lift your hands right now where you are. Right where you are, lift your hands. Lift your hands. When you recognize who God is, and you recognize who you are in when you measure up to God, you ought to still say, you know what? I'm a mess. And because I'm a mess, but yet God still has me alive, He still has me here, He's still taking care of me, He's still meeting my needs. You know what? God, I'm good. That right there should eliminate the spirit of complaining. Because yes, you may not have everything you want, but you got more than you deserve. Lift your hands. Father, these are the hands of, of we. Father, your sheep. Uh, God, we know, no. We know we're not the smartest. We know that we can be very timid. We know we can be very fearful. We know sometimes, God, we could just be outright stupid. We could do some dumb stuff. But, Father, with our hands lifted in your presence, we surrender our lives to you. Oh, God. We give ourselves totally 
to you. And whatever you want to do with us, lead us. Lead us. We submit ourselves to you. We honor you. And we thank you. So, Father, we make the declaration right now that you, Jehovah God, the Lord, you are our shepherd. We confess it. We declare it. And we are your sheep. Use us however you want to do. And we'll give you all the honor glory and the praise. If there's somebody that needs to connect with you, Father, speak to their hearts right now. Speak to their hearts. That they can make the best decision they've ever made and make you their shepherd. In the name of Jesus, we declare that it is so. Amen. Amen. Son, daughter, if you're here on the sound of my voice, real quick, don't log off yet. I really want you to make a decision. If you are here today and you have never made the Lord Jesus Christ your Lord, your shepherd. This is the perfect time. This is the perfect time. He, he, he's, he's making it very clear. David made it very clear. Uh, no, no, no. I'm not, de I'm not declaring anybody my shepherd. It's the Lord that's my shepherd. Jehovah is my shepherd. Because there are some things, some people that's been leading others, and, and they had been leading you right. There are other stuff and other things in this world that's been holding you and leading you and has been leading you straight astray. But Jehovah, He's got you. He'll, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. If that's you and you've never accepted Him as your Lord and your Savior, that information is right there on the screen. Go ahead and just go ahead. Go ahead. Text that number. Say, I, I want to declare the Lord my shepherd. I, I want to be His sheep. I want to be in the fold. If you've never accepted him, accept him as your Lord, your Savior. He got you. If, if you don't have a church home and, and you're not connected to a body of believers, you haven't been a part of a fold, come on, I'd love to be your pastor. We all be your, your family of faith. And we're all sheep being led to where God has taken us. Text that number. If you haven't had the opportunity to, to sow, to give, the information is right there. Go ahead and put that information in. Text it. Share it. And let God do what he's doing with you. I can't wait to see what God is getting ready to do in your life. Until we see each other again, be blessed, son. Be blessed, daughter. And let's continue to thank our God for being our shepherd. God bless you. God keep you all. That's my prayer. My brothers and my sisters, at this moment, we want to take this time and participate in what we call Holy Communion as we remember the sacrifice that our Lord made, the love that He displayed by giving of Himself for you and for me. So right where you are, it doesn't matter. You're at your home, go and get you a piece of bread. Go ahead and get you a piece of bread. Go get you something of the vine. Go ahead and get it. If it's juice, well, I don't care whatever it is. We're going to remember. God says just as long as when you do it, you remember me. Go ahead and get it. We're going to remember what the Lord has done. The word of God says, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it. In remembrance of me, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Father, I ask you right now in Jesus' name, please take this bread, this cup, 
out of any secular thought, sanctify this moment and let it be a holy reminder of just how much you love and how much you care for us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. The bread that symbolized the body of our Lord and our Savior that was broken, that was beaten, that was mutilated for you and for me. He did it because He loved us just that much. Let us eat together. And the cup that symbolized blood that was shed for you and for me. The Word of God makes very clear that without the shedding of blood, there would be no remission of sin. He did it because He loved us just that much. Let us drink together. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus came and did it just for me. Just for me. Just for me. Jesus came and did it just for me.